Welcome to Pioneering Decisive Solutions. This video will introduce one of our products, Simultest. Simultest is a test development and execution application that enables technicians and engineers to run test program sets. In this walkthrough, we will demonstrate in a few steps how easy it is to develop a simple test program set. This TPS will generate an analog signal, then verify that signal's amplitude, comparing a value against limits to generate the TPS outcome. Let's create your first project. The icon in the upper left corner opens the application menu. Click on it, then select New. The Save As dialog box appears. I'm saving to a folder that I've made in my documents, but you may save the file anywhere you wish. Click on the File Name field and we'll save our project as Example. Note that the extension of the project file is SMT, short for Simultest. Click Save or hit Enter to create the project. A new, empty project has been created. The left-hand panel is the tree area. The default framework of the test program contains a test group, which in turn contains a single test, which then contains five test channels. Each test channel represents an instrument resource capability. Underneath the test program tree is the properties pane, which updates when selecting available items. Switch to the instrument tree by clicking on the test station tab. All instruments present on the station, with all of their resources and capabilities, have been loaded and are available to your project. This information comes from the external configuration file that was specifically created for your station as part of Simultest installation. Before we add an instrument to the test, note that if the instruments are not physically present on the system, you will need to develop the TPS in simulation mode. This is done by first clicking on Test Station, followed by checking the simulated checkbox here in the Test Station Properties pane. Select the AI-760 Multifunction Analog Test Instrument. Just like the test program tree, notice that the information in the Properties pane under the Instrument tree will update to show information pulled from the Test Station config file and from instrument-specific template files. Expand the Instrument node. The AI-760 MFA has these eight resources, but we only need one at this time. Select the Channel 1 node and drill further to expose its resource capabilities, signal generation, and a digitizer. We want the signal generation capability. Click and drag the instrument to the channel. While I can make assignments to any one of these empty channels, I'm electing to place it on the first. The channel is assigned and you'll notice that an object was automatically added to the channel timeline. This is the graphical representation of our instrument operation. Start and end times of an operation are determined by the position and size of this symbol. To the right is the channel header, which contains the instrument capability information, and selecting it will show additional information in the channel properties further to the right. To add another operation to this channel, simply pull another Generate Signal symbol from the toolbox. Since the assigned capability is analog and has a source role, the operation created on this channel is an analog generation. Only operations that are compatible with the assigned test channel capability can be dropped onto the channel. As you can see, I raise an error when I try to add in a digital operation from the toolbox. I don't need the second operation I brought in, so I'll select it then press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. The signal start time is determined by the placement of its left edge on the timeline. To change when it starts, just move it laterally. While moving the operation, the start time will update dynamically in the channel properties. Now we'll define this operation to generate an output over 200 milliseconds. With the operation selected, find the spot on the right side of the symbol where the mouse cursor changes. Once you find the handle, Click and drag it to resize the duration graphically, the red number underneath reflecting the new duration. 
Alternatively, we can edit the duration value directly in the properties pane. To access and configure the attributes for the SigGen operation, double-click on the symbol. This will open the AI7's config window. We can select the type of waveform to generate, but for now we'll use the default sine wave. Set the amplitude to 2 volts and the frequency to 25 kHz. Click Save and Close to save the operation settings. The configuration dialog can also be opened by clicking on the Settings Configuration button in the Generation Properties pane. Verify that the settings were properly saved. You can also view the main settings of the signal in the Operation Properties pane. Instead of clicking Save and Close this time, click on the main window to bring it back into focus. To verify the signal attributes, we will use the AI760 DSO to acquire the generated signal. This should feel familiar. First, expand the AI760 DSO instrument in the Channel 1, Channel 2 resource. Second, select the scope capability and drag it over to an empty test channel. Third, move the acquisition operation that was added for you so that the start time of the operation is 170 milliseconds leaving the operation's default 20 millisecond duration. Double-click on the new operation to open the AI7 instrument config. I am enabling channel 1 for acquisition as it is the channel that is physically wired to the MFA channel 1 on my chassis. Keep the other attributes as they are. Normally you'd save and close, but just like with the other config window, we'll hide it for now by clicking on the main window. Now we'll add a measurement on the acquired signal. Click the Measurements Configure button in the Acquisition Properties pane to open its configuration dialog. Simultest already created a measurement defaulting to voltage max. To change the measurement, select a new type from the list of available measurements provided. For this exercise, we will keep using voltage max. Set the measurement mode to verify and specify the comparison limits. Since we are acquiring a 2 volt peak to peak signal, we'll set the limits of the measurement to 0.8 volts and 1.2 volts. Before running the TPS, you might want to ensure that the operations are configured properly. Simultest provides a way of running signals from their configuration dialogs. Hold Alt and press Tab to find the signal generation configuration dialog and the Acquisition Operation dialog that we left open earlier. Arrange the two windows side by side so that both are visible. In the Signal Generation dialog, click Run to start signal generation. In the Acquisition dialog, also click on Run to start the signal acquisition. The graphical element in this dialog will start displaying the acquired signal. The user has the option to adjust the operation settings until the acquired signal looks as expected. You might need to adjust some of the signal generation settings as well. You can go back and forth between the two open configuration dialogs until the desired result is obtained. Before moving on, save and close both dialog windows. The next step is to define the fault dictionary of the test and the fault trees of the test group and test program. In the test channel diagram, activate the fault isolation tab. Simultest creates the columns of the fault dictionary, one column for each measurement that generates a test outcome. You will need to add the entries for the rows in the fault dictionary table for the measurement failed mode. If the measurement fails high, set the test outcome to failed and enter replace C1 in the callout cell indicating that C1 is the faulty component that needs to be replaced by the operator. If the measurement fails low, set the test outcome to failed and enter replace R1 in the callout cell.
open the test group channel diagram by double clicking on the test group node in the test program tree and select the fault isolation tab once again to view the test group fault tree. Simultest automatically creates the test group fault tree when only one test exists in the test group. Adding more tests to the test group requires the editing of the test group fault tree to specify how the execution will branch based on test outcomes. The same is valid for the test program fault tree. The application creates an initial version of this tree with only the first test group added. Once the user adds more test groups, their entries in the test program tree must be characterized to indicate the execution flow of the TPS based on the outcome of test groups. The next step is to validate the test program to make sure it is ready for execution. To do this, click the Build button in the Application Toolbar. Any messages related to the build will be displayed here in the output area, including build error messages. To demonstrate a build error, let's create another signal generation operation on the test channel diagram. Activate the test station tree and assign the AI760 MFA's channel 2 FGen capability onto an empty channel. Do not configure this operation and try the build button again. A validation error is displayed in the output area. You may click on the error to have the application select the operation that causes the error. Remove the test channel by clicking the X button on the channel header and rebuild the program. This time the test program should validate and the output area should indicate that. Note the build succeeded message in the output area. The next step is to run the TPS. Activate the execution view by clicking on the switch to execution button in the application toolbar. Press the run button in the application toolbar to start TPS execution. The execution parameters dialog will be displayed. Here is where the operator enters execution data that has relevance only for reporting purposes. Leave the fields empty for now and press OK. The execution progress will be indicated in the output area via execution messages. If the execution passes, this will be indicated with a dialog box stating that the TPS has passed. All the tree nodes in the execution tree will be displayed with green bullets and the execution messages displayed in the output area that indicate the measurement, test, test group, and TPS outcomes will be displayed in green. We can make the execution fail by changing the limit value of the measurement operation. Switch back to the design view and open the acquisition measurement dialog and change the upper limit of the max voltage measurement to 0.9 volts. Rebuild the program and switch back to the execution view and run the TPS again. This time the end of execution callout dialog will display that the TPS has failed and will also display the callout that the user has defined for this failure. In this case, since the measurement failed high, the callout is replace C1. Note that at the end of the TPS execution, all the nodes in the execution tree are now displayed with red bullets and that all outcome messages in the output area are now displayed in red. To visualize the results of the TPS execution, activate the result tree expanding the test tree node to view all the generated results traces. To view a type of test result in graphical mode, drag and drop the corresponding result trace node onto the results area. To view all test results, you can also drag and drop the test itself onto the results area. This will create graphical traces for all available test results. You can zoom in and out, scroll the results area, Modify the properties of a result trace, 
and change the ratio of voltage by division. Note the temporal alignment of instrument operations. You can use the cursors provided by Simultest to mark up to four positions of interest within the signal display and also to make time measurements. Let's bring cursor C1 into view. Go to the cursor's toolbar group and click on the C1 arrow to show the available options. Select Move Cursor into view. This will draw the C1 cursor on the results area. Its position represents the elapsed time since beginning of a test in the continuous time domain. Drag the cursor by clicking on the upper arrow and align it with the start of the acquired signal to see the exact time where the acquisition operation started. Bring the C2 cursor into view and move it to the end of the acquired signal. The C1 C2 entry in the toolbar will display the time elapsed between the positions of the two cursors. In this case, it will match the duration of the acquisition operation as we have configured it in the channel diagram. You have now developed a simple test program set using Simultest. The TPS generated an analog signal, verified the signal's amplitude, and compared a value against limits to generate the TPS outcome. Thank you for using Simultest.